Now, I don't know how many of you are going to be uh, know the whole history of this this parable, uh, which we, which we believe came from somewhere. What was then uh, part of the United Kingdom, the uh, Corby and and, and Rutland, the, the area there. And this is how the story goes: that there was an optimistic period. Uh, at the end of the, the dark days of a world war. And there's a new hope for working people, new housing, uh, schools and sewers and hospitals and, uh, and work for everybody who, who, who wanted to work and hospitals and healthcare and pensions and everything. And then there was a field, just an ordinary field. And, uh, and one day, Brain walked onto that field. It was an unprecedented size, and it was called Sundew. And this is the parable of Sundew. And uh, the mission of Sundew was to draw the fertile soil from the fields, then dig down, dig down, dig down, dig down, down, down taking off all of the, the overburden of, of, of soil until it got down to a, a thin layer of, of the precious iron ore which was, which was still the, the, one of the prime needs of society. And then what, is, what Sundew's mission on the world in doing that was to, to, to remove that few yards of thickness of the iron ore then put all the earth back in and put the soil back and the grass would grow and the animals could live on there and nature would return. And it would be a harvest. The iron ore would have been harvested and it would have gone back to uh, how it was. And so that's what Sandu did for nearly 20 years or around 20 years, I believe. Then because the nature of Sandu is it, it could slowly walk about tenth of a mile an hour, just in big steps, that after it moved through and harvested all this iron ore, it then just walked over land, over land, over rivers, through villages and, and uh, across streams and, uh, and uh, rivers and ended up 13 miles away, as it turns out, because I suppose there's, uh, there's always numbers, aren't there? And it, it, it carried on doing the same went on for an, another few years and then after all, all, all this time this hard hard work it was decided that Sundu had harvested enough for the world and would retire so they took it to a place and rested its it, its jib on the ground and that's where as far as the world was concerned it would just stay as a an example of the wonderful endeavours of, of people and uh, how they controlled their world. But secretly, during that seven years, or not secretly but unnoticed by people, the great underlying, the steel-making force, the, the god of steel production, as they would have thought back in those days, that had previously, quite sh shortly before, had, had made an amazingly, most unbelievable piece of uh, engineering, which is at the end of that great war that I mentioned before. It had produced pipes to take the energy that was needed to take people to return the darkness of the world. It made these pipes and laid them overnight, and they felt that there was a, a brotherhood, if you like, a brotherhood of of the machines and the, and the iron making and the... So, after seven years, in the, one, one night, Sundu just took to walking. Because Sundu wanted to respect the working ethos, if you like. For only seven hours in a day was, was walking uh, happening. Which means that just to walk down to the channel, down towards, towards Dover, that took really quite a long time. So after months of walking, walking, stopping, walking, 
and stopping 0.1 of a mile an hour. Suddenly you got to the the channel and then looking back on it, it seems incredible that what has always been called the steel making force, as, as far as I know, it had, well, as we know, suddenly you got to the channel and decided that, that really the best place to work for the, the best open cast mines to to go and see how other people in this loose society of the iron making force we go yes to go to South Africa to the mild Emil Christensen and because of the, the difficulties the, the route is quite long you, you can look at the map and see the route that they took and that walk uh, pleasant and full of thoughts and memories one, one presumes uh, it's difficult to imagine what it's it's like to be a, a giant um, crane it, it wasn't an, until 2014 that's uh, 34 and a half years later got there but nobody knows what happens but basically immediately suddenly got there 180 degree turn back up Africa and by then China had become the new place of optimism where all the new towns and new cities were being made the need for steel was great the love of progress was fully on so so that journey, which as you can imagine, was even longer and extremely arduous across some of the, the desert parts of, of the Middle East and across China and right past Beijing. Well, well, Sunday didn't actually get to Bengtsi until 2043. In fact, of course, as we know, by then things had changed again. But there was still a, a massive welcome when Sunday arrived in, in, in Jensen. In, in the, the, the welcoming, there were the new, the new super huge dumper trucks that could hold 500 tonnes of the iron ore in the back and freely run at up to 40 miles an hour when they're empty to move the earth. I mean, this is compared to 27 tonnes that Sandu could take in the bucket and then load it into something else that had to be unloaded, etc. It was very pleasant for somebody to see how things had changed and, and he could still be of use. So that's when his great legacy, the, the meaning of the parable, as some people believe, comes in. That the that rather like, although in an accurate, as, as you may think, why this is an anachronism, this parable, the mission of the steel making force, if you like, if you can think in terms of missions, the furthering of steel in, in the world. Because, oh, obviously, Sunday was made of the uh, super high-grade material. I mean, the Sunday was actually born of the high tensile chrome, molybdenum, fine-grained steel, aluminium, fully killed steel. And so he was just melted back into the stock of steel. In other forms, still with us now, all these many years later. And so people have a tendency to think that the parable of Sunday was that although things change, although times change and things are in different forms, so what people say is that like the field that Sunday was originally scraping with, his, with the cable and the bucket returned to, to being a field, albeit slightly lower because of the removal of the underlying ore in the mining operation. That steel has become part of the steel that is the whole reason for the steel making force. And, and I think that's why people enjoyed the parable of Sundew. It's a very, very long story. I mean, Sundew is sort of a symbol of the, of the humble, really, just working, then actually. Uh, it's one of the aspects that's mysterious of the story. Why did people not pursue Sandu? And considering that if Sandu had stayed there in Gorby, the, the bucket would have been preserved and made into a museum exhibit. But the, the actual essence of Sandu would still be there. It would still be in the still world. Because... You know, in the archives, we can see pictures of the very owners of the steel-making enterprise advertising for scrap. And so 
there's a sense that somebody represents escaping from the cycle for as long as possible to enjoy the world and to put off not really the inevitable because with a lot of lower grade steel so the corrosion would have been by far the most extreme threat to their existence. Other scholars say that it can only be an idea because there's no physical evidence, which is odd because you, you would think there would be photographs. But sometimes things that move very slowly don't appear to move. But it was quite a noticeable size, you would think. That's why I'm very sceptical about this whole story. So some people think the parable is saying a very unlikely story can make you wonder why it's so unlikely and therefore spot what is likely by kind of uh, being the antithesis or the other side to, to actual common sense or thought or whatever. Um, but, um, yes, 